Welcome back to Ballroom Feed. Today we're gonna to be doing a new series for you and this is with the merengue. So today we're gonna to do the basic in place, the basic traveling to the man's left, lady's right, and also forward and back. Let's get into it. footwork for the basic in place, side, forward and backwards. So I start in place and drive my left foot first and I'm literally just marching in place. I'm going step in place, right foot, left foot, right foot, just marching, just changing my feet in place and we'll typically do this in, in this case, eight counts. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I do the basic to the side, I'm gonna go side, close my feet, side, close my feet. These are small, comfortable steps as I take steps to my left side. And if I do the same thing from the back, you can see I'm gonna go my left foot first, side, close the feet all the way together, side, close. It's important that my feet close all the way together instead of staying apart as I move to the side, which looks kind of funny. I can do the same thing going forward and backwards. So if I go forward with my left foot first, I'm gonna go forward, forward. These are small steps, passing my feet slightly as I go forward. And then when I wanna change and go backwards now with my left foot first, Small steps going backwards each time. Like half of my foot length, I don't need to travel a ton because now she has to kind of run after me. So this, about half of my foot is the size of my step each time I take one. And when I change to go backwards, it, so I do the counts. If I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I'm gonna replace to go backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, now it's time for the ladies' footwork for the merengue. So we're gonna start with the basic in place. Easiest put, this is called our marching dance. So I'm gonna march in place for eight steps, starting with the right foot. I'm gonna go right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, with the timing and the count. It's gonna be one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight. We're doing it in eights because it's easiest to keep track with the music, but you could also do it in any even integer, all right? All right we're also gonna do this to our right. So we're gonna do um, side together going to the right. So I'm gonna start out slightly to the side, close the feet together, side, close the feet together, side, close the feet, and side, close the feet for eight counts with the timing. That'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So on every odd number, I'm gonna be stepping slightly to the side. Every even number, I'm gonna close the feet and switch weight. So the biggest thing about merengue is I'm always switching my feet no matter what. In an advanced pattern, there could be some trickier things, but that just makes it more complicated. This is a lead follow dance. We're always gonna change our feet. Four and a back, same deal. I'm gonna take eight steps first, starting backwards. So I'm gonna go back, 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 and then forward on the right foot. Forward, 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 and even eight counts. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are gonna be pretty small steps. It does depend on your leader. We'll talk about that more later, but basically just make them small. It's more about the hip action, which we can talk about later, and just staying on the beat, which is quite fast in the merengue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 So the key points for this basic in place, side forward and backwards. So as we go into these basics here, I don't have to do everything in eight counts, but I have to do everything in even integers. So I can go 
two, four, six, eight, ten steps in any direction. I do not have to go eight, but it makes learning the dance and the patterns easier. We'll try to keep a lot of these patterns in counts of four or eight to make them even. But it's easier to lead and follow that way. Yes. Keep in mind, the more often that I change, the more leading and following I have to do, which makes it more complicated. So learning this for now, when I'm dancing in place and I start to move, one, two, three, I'm just keeping connection with her. You can check out the frame videos and whatnot, so we have good connection together. Now when I want to start moving myself to the side, I'm going to move my body and my frame to the side in order for her to feel it. So if I'm dancing in place, I'm going one, two, three, four, I'm going to start to move my frame and body before my feet to the side, and now she feels that I want to take her in this direction. She will not feel if my feet start to move first, so I'm one, two, however many of even numbers I want to do. When my left foot is free, I will start to move my body first, and now she'll feel and start to take side steps with me. I can take a generous side step to begin, so she does feel the difference, instead of if I'm dancing in place and then I kind of start moving, and she's not really sure, and then we kind of get off on different feet for some reason, so there's a lot of things that ha can happen. I want to make it very clear. So if I go one, two, three, four, I move five, six, seven, eight, whatever numbers I want to use. It's the same thing now when I want to go forward and backwards. So if I'm dancing in place here, I need to now move myself forward into her to send her backwards, and then I very clearly move myself backwards again. It's my frame and my center moving first. Every time I want to make a change, as long as we're connected well, then she will feel these. Yes, yeah, so um, two tips to start out the merengue because for some reason, there, since there's no side, backwards, or forward motion in place, sometimes it's hard to kind of understand when he wants to start. Mm -hmm. If he knows how to count music, he'll probably start on the one or the five, which is in a phrase of eight. Or he'll just start on the two, and then you'll just be like maybe caught off guard if you're like me and you understand the music. So we have two tricks for you. He could still start with the stationary basic. He doesn't have to start with the side basic, but that first step is easier to follow sometimes if we go side, together, together, together. So even if it was just that very first step, just to kind of get her on the same foot, it kind of forces her to step with that right foot with you on the same beat. That being said, you can do the same thing with the forward and back basic and then go together. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. Of course, that being said, you could as well start with the side basic or the forward and back basic if you so choose. Sometimes it's just you don't have the option or the space if you're in a crowded place. One other thing, this is a more advanced way, I would say. So the way that I feel my partner if we were dancing more advanced, is on eight or even seven, eight. We're both gonna bend the knee that we're gonna use. So he's gonna lower five, six, seven, eight. I feel it because we have our connection in our frame. And then he could step one or even in place. So if we prep that foot, I'm already on the correct foot. So by him lowering and bending his left knee, it causes me to lower and bend my right knee. Therefore, I know we're gonna start on the right foot one, two. That's a little more advanced, so I definitely suggest starting with the other ways, but that's a little trick for you. And definitely check out our How to Connect to Your Partner videos and your frame, because without that, you're not going to be able to follow anything that he gives you. So the best way to practice this and get used to the basics and get used to changing them is I'm leading all these changes, and you can change them on two, four, or eight. I would suggest maybe we can go through all of them in a row and make a little practice routine. So I go one, two, three, four, and then I go one, two, three, four, and then I go forward, two, three, four, and then back, two, three, four, and I can repeat the same thing again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As we get more confident with this and we're changing directions cleanly together, I can now start to change up when I change to each direction. So I can keep the same sequencing and I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I can start to move to the side and then I can start to move her backwards at a random time. Because we lead and follow pretty well together now, I could change on any beat and she follows me pretty well. So I could change at any even number after I complete two steps. One, two, my left foot is free and I can go one, two, my left foot is free, and I can go one, two, my left foot is free, and I can change 
every other step. It's just so when he's leading a new direction or a new pattern, he'll always be starting on his left foot. Mm -hmm. That way I'll always be starting on my right foot. So it creates some continuity within the differences of timing and different mm -hmm. steps. Mm. The last thing is it's not easy to change to go to the other side. So if I'm taking side steps to my left, it is not easy and not clear if I want to change sides with her, because I would have to either tap and use the foot again, which is incredibly hard to communicate to her, like you just saw. I would have to close in place and then start moving in that direction, which would be the way to do it. But then I would have to start moving with my left foot and he would have to start moving with his right foot. Right. So it's just, it, it's um, more difficult to lead and follow that way, that's all. Yeah, all of our patterns move either to the left or from stationary basics, so you could move to the right if you would like the challenge, but yeah. We don't I'd suggest it's necessary right now. There's like no right or wrongs really in merengue. It's kind of like you're easy, you get maybe experience leading and following and comfortable with new positions and directions. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not like that's wrong. This is just the most easy way to learn it, I would say. Cool. Cool. Thank you so much for watching our merengue video. Stay tuned for more in this series and be sure to check out the rest of our club section for our salsa and bachata videos. Also, if you like this video and you want more content, more in-depth, things like that, we have a section on our website called Ballroom V Pro. You can check it out in the link below. That's gonna have a ton of more patterns, more content, more technique and styling, basically all those more in-depth type of things that you wanna see. Go check out that. And we'll see you very soon, thank you.